The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, second chapter, text number 10, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on August 16, 1973, in London, England. Translation O descendant of Bharata, at that time Krishna, smiling, in the midst of both armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjuna. Rishi Kesa Prahasan Iva Krishna began to laugh, smiling. What a nonsense it is. First of all he said, Puddhi Senaya Rubhayan Vaddi Rata Sthapaya Me Ushita Krishna just put by chariot between the two <coughs> parties of soldiers. And now you are so enthusiastic in the beginning that put my chariot between the two armies. Now this rascal is saying, No do so, I will not find. Just see the rascal down. <laughs> so, even Arjun, Krishna's direct friend, Maya is so strong that he also becomes a rascal. I want to speak of others. First of all, very enthusiasm. Yes, put my chariot between the two armies. And now, now just say, it is going. I am not going to fight. This is Askarya. So he has smiled. Uh, that he is my friend, direct friend, and such a big. And he is now saying that I am not fight. So Krishna smiling. This smiling is very significant. For her son. Tamubhāsa rishi kesa prahasan iva bhārata senaya rubha visīdantam lament. First of all he came with great enthusiasm to fight. Now he is lamenting. And Krishna is mentioned here as rishi kesa. He is solid. He is achyuta. He is solid. Uh, he is not changed. Uh, another significant of this was Vishikesha, because in Narad uh, Pancharatra, the bhakti means Vishikesha Sevanam. Uh, therefore, uh, this very name is mentioned here, Vishikesha. Uh, Rishikesha Sevanam, Bhakti Rutsha. Bhakti means to serve Rishikesha, the master of this. And the master of senses, some rascals are describing that Krishna is immortal. He is master of senses and he is immortal. That's the how, how he has studied Bhagavad Gita. He, Krishna is perfect brahmachari. Krishna is perfect brahmachari. Uh, well, it was declared by Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev is the first great brahmachari in the universe. Uh, he promised uh, to Sattvavati's father, you know the story, Sattvavati's father, his, uh, Bhishma Dev's father uh, was attracted by a fisher woman, fisher girl. Uh, so he wanted to marry. Uh, and the father of the girl denied, No, I cannot give my daughter to you. Uh, so, why? I am king, I am asking your daughter. No, you have got a son. Uh, Bhishma then 
was the son of his first wife, uh, Mother Ganges. Uh, Mother Ganges was wife of Santanu Maharaj, and Bhishma Dev was the only remaining son. The contract was uh, between Santanu Maharaj and Ganges, Mother Ganges, uh, that I can marry you if you allow me the all the children born, I shall throw in the water of the name. And if you uh, do not allow me, then immediately I shall leave your company. So Santani Maharaj said, all right, still I shall marry you. So she was throwing all the children in the Ganges. So this Bhishma Dev, so after all father, so he became very much sorry that what is this, what kind of wife I have got. She is simply throwing all the children in the water. So at the time of Bhishma Dev, Santana Maharaj said, no, I cannot allow it. I cannot allow it. Then uh, Nada Gandhi said, then I am going, yes, you can go. I don't want it. I want this son. So he was wife, wifeless. Again he wanted to marry the Sattvati. So the father said, no, I cannot give my daughter to you because you have got a son, grown-up son. He will be king. So I cannot give my daughter to you to become your maid servant. Her, if I would have uh, thought that her son would be the king, then I can offer you my daughter. So he said, no, that is not possible. But Bhishma Dev understood that my uh, father is attracted with this girl, so he approached. Uh, that he said to the fisherman that you can offer your daughter to my father, but uh, you are thinking that I shall become king, so your daughter's son will be king. On this condition you can offer your daughter. Uh, so he replied, no, I cannot. Uh, why? Nah. You may not be king, but uh, your son may be king. Let's see this material calculation. Uh, that at that time he said, you know, uh, I shall not marry. That's all. I promise. I shall not marry. So he remained Brahmachari. Therefore his name is Bhishma. Bhishma means uh, very solid firmly fixed. So he was a brahmachari. For the sake, for the satisfaction of his father's senses, he remained brahmachari. This Bhishma Dev in a Rasya Jamma admitted that nobody is better brahmachari than Krishna. He was Within the gopi, all young girls, uh, but he remained the brahmachari. If I would have been within the gopi, I do not know what was, what would have been my condition. Uh, so therefore, Krishna is the perfect brahmachari, Rishikesha. And these rascals, they are saying that Krishna is immoral. No. <coughs> Krishna is perfect Brahmacharya. Bhira. Bhira means one is not educated even there is cause of being educated. So Krishna is such a Brahmacharya. <coughs> in spite of, uh, in his, he, just on the verge of youthful at the age of fifteen, sixteen years, uh, all the village girls, my friend, they are very much attracted with Krishna's beauty 
they used to come to Krishna for dancing in the village, but he was Brahmachari. You will never hear that Krishna has some illicit sex, no. There was no such thing description. The dancing is description, but no contraceptive pill, no. That is not described. That what is Rishikesha. Rishikesha means perfect Brahmacharya. Ah. Vikara Hetu, even there is cause of being educated, he is not educated. That is Krishna. Ah. Ah. He has got thousands and thousands of devotees. And some of the devotees, if they warn Krishna as lover, Krishna accepts that. But he does not require any, anyone else. Oh. He does not require. He is self-sufficient. He does not require anyone's help for his own oh. Therefore Krishna is his education, the master of the senses. Oh. At least Krishna's devotees. There are many instances of Krishna's devotees. Oh. They are also, oh. why many? Almost all devotees, they are master of the senses. Goshan, just like Haridas Thakur, you know. Haridas Thakur was a young man, and the village Jaminda, he was Mohammedan. So everyone was eulogizing Haridas Thakur, such a great devotee. So the Javinda, the village Javinda, he became very much envious. So he employed one prostitute to pollute Haridas Thapu. Uh, and she came at dead of night, uh, nicely dressed, attractive. She was also young, very beautiful. Uh, so she proposed that I come. Uh, being attracted by your beauty. Haridas Thakur said, Yes, that's all right. Come on, sit down. <coughs> Let me finish my chant. Then you shall enjoy. Uh, so she sat down. But Haridas Thakur chanting, he was chanting, we, are, we cannot chant even sixteen downs. And he was chanting, uh, Three times sixty-four rounds. How many? It is. Hundred and ninety-six rounds. That was his only business. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. So sometime somebody wants to imitate Haridas Thakur. It's not possible. <coughs> so Haridas Thakur, when it became morning, the prostitute, okay, Sir, now this morning. Yes, next night, sir. Come next night. Uh, today I could not finish my chanting. Uh, that was a plea. In this way, three days passed. Uh, then the prostitute became convert. Fell down on me. Sir, I came to pollute you. Now see me. I am so fallen. Uh, so he last time he said, yes, I know that. I could have leave this place immediately when you came. But I wanted that you have come to me, you may be converted to this business. So the prostitute became a great devotee by the mercy of Haridas Thakur says that you sit down in this place, you chant Hare Krishna before this tulsi plant, now I am leaving this place. So Krishna Bhakti is like that. Uh, full control over the senses. As Krishna has got full control over the senses, similarly, those who are actually Krishna devotees, they have got full control over the senses. Rishi uh, Just like uh, Jamunasat, uh, he is praying. Uh, he is speaking. Uh, Yadavadhi mamachitta krishna padaravinde 
Ramana Ramana Dhamma Rantu Mahasi. Since I began to feel transcendental bliss being taken shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, Jagavadhi Mama Chitta Krishna Padaravindi. Krishna Padaravindi. The lotus feet of Krishna. Since my chitta, my heart has been attracted by the lotus feet of Krishna. Tadavadhi Vatanari Sangamit. Since then, as soon as I think of sex life, Bhavati Mukhavikara. I hate, I spite on it. This is Krishna Bhakti. Krishna Bhakti is like that. Bhakti Parishanu Bhava Virakti Annakrasa. There is most attractive feature in this material world is sex. That is the foundation of material life. All these people are working so hard day and night only for that sex environment. They are taking so much risk. They are working for me. They are working so hard. What is their pleasure of life? The pleasure of life is sex. Janamai Tanadi Grihami Rishukam Mipucham. Very abominable activities, but that is their pleasure. This is material life. So, Krishna is not like that. But the rascals they paint pictures, and that pictures are very much appreciated. That Krishna is embracing gopis. And somebody is telling me that, that who came? Yes. Krishna's picture. So, when Krishna is killing Putana, that picture they will not paint. Or killing Kamsa. Or Krishna has got so many pictures. They, these pictures they will not, that is. They will simply paint the pictures. Uh, his confidence and dealing with the gopis. Uh, one who cannot understand Krishna, what is Krishna, uh, with Vasudev has described what is Krishna in nine cantos to understand Krishna. And then in the tenth canto he begins the birth advent of Krishna. But these rascals, they jump over immediately to the Rasvila. First of all, understand Krishna. Just like he, if you become a friend of some very big man, so first of all, try to understand him. Then you try to understand his family affairs or confidential thing. But these people jump over to the Rasvila. And misunderstand. And therefore, they sometimes say Krishna is immoral. How Krishna can be immoral? <coughs> by accepting, by chanting Krishna's name, the immoral persons are becoming moral, and Krishna is immoral. Just see the foolishness. Simply by chanting Krishna's name, all immoral persons are becoming moral, and Krishna is immoral. And it is spoken by a rascal professor. Uh, so it is very difficult. Uh, nobody can understand Krishna without becoming a pure devotee of Krishna. Uh, because Krishna says, Bhaktyamava vijanasi javan jaschami tattva. Tattva uh, uh, in truth. Kapata means truth. If one wants to understand Krishna as he is, then he has to take this process of devotion. Kapata, bhakti, vishikina, vishiki, sasrivanam, bhakti ruchyate. When one is employed as the servitor of vishiki, the master of senses. Master and vishikena, when your senses are also engaged in the service of the master of the senses, 
then you also become master of the senses. You also, because your senses are engaged in the service of the Rishikesha, the senses have no other opportunity to be engaged. Locked up. Savai manak prishna padara So, this is the process of devotional service. If you want to become uh, master of the senses, go shari, shari, then you should always keep your senses engaged in the service of Rishi Kesha. That is the only way. Otherwise, it is not possible. As soon as you become little slack to engage your senses, in the service of the master of the senses, immediately mind is there. Come on, please. This is the Krishna bhuliya jeeva bhoga vancha kare pasate maya tare japotiya dhore. As soon as you forget Krishna, even for a moment, immediately maya is there. Please, my dear friend, come here. Therefore, we have to become very uh, cautious. We cannot forget <coughs> Krishna even for a moment. That was the chanting purpose. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Always remember Krishna. Uh, then Maya will not be able to touch it. Mami Maya prapadyanti, mayamitaṁ taranti. Maya cannot touch. This is like Vidāsā. He was engaged in the service of Rishi Kesha, and Maya came in full fledged strength. Still, she was limited. Haridas Thakur was not limited. So try to understand Krishna as Rishi Kesha. So Rishi Kesha Krishna began to laugh that he is my friend constant associate and such weakness. He first of all was enthusiastic to ask me to take his chariot, Sena Rubha Madhya. Now Bishidam Tam, now he is reality. So, so we are all fools like that. Arjun is not fool. Arjun is has been described as Bhivakrish. How we can be fool? But he is playing the part of Fool. If he does not play the part of a fool, how does Bhagavad Gita will come from the mouth of Sri Krishna? And because he is devoted, he is perfectly playing in such a way that Krishna is giving instruction. So, perfect teacher and the perfect disciple. Oh, we have to learn from their view. Our position, Arjuna is representing just like ordinary man, like us. And Krishna is Rishi Kesha giving his advice, perfect advice. If we take, if you read Bhagavad Gita in the spirit of understanding like Arjuna, the perfect disciple, and if we accept the advice and instruction of Krishna, the perfect teacher, then we should know that we have understood Bhagavad Gita. By my mental speculation, by rascal interpretation, by showing one's scholarship, you cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. That is not possible. Sarmish. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Sadviddhi Pranipate na Paripasne na Sevaya. So we have to surrender as Kajyam, to surrender. Shishrasve hamsari maam prapannam. I surrender unto you. I become your disciple. To become disciple means to surrender. Voluntarily accepting the instruction, the advice, the order of the spiritual master. 
So Arjuna has already accepted that. Oh. Although he is speaking, that not just Krishna is not fight. But Master, when he uh, explains everything, he will fight. Uh, master's order. Uh, not to fight, that is his own sense gratification. And to fight, in spite of, he has no desire to fight, that is the satisfaction of the master. Uh, this is the summon satisfaction of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, <coughs> so Krishna uh, seeing Arjuna, Vishidantam, very much affected, lamenting, that he is not prepared uh, to do his duty. <coughs> Therefore, in the next verse, he begins that asochyananusutastam prajnavadāṅsya bhāsas. Uh, my dear John, uh, you are my friend. Uh, never mind, my is very strong, uh, despite your being my friend, personal. You are so much overwhelmed with false compassion. So just here. Therefore, say, Asochyam, you are lamenting on a subject matter uh, which is uh, not at all Asochyam. Uh, socha means lamentation. And Asochyam means one should not lament. Asochyam. Uh, so Asochyam is what is some prajnavadam but you are talking like very learned scholar, uh, because he has talked. But those things are right. Uh, what Arjuna has said that oh, Bhagna Sankha, uh, when the woman become polluted, the population is Bhagna Sankha. Uh, that is fact. Whatever Arjuna has said to Krishna, you know, to avoid the fighting, so those things are correct. Uh, but from the uh, spiritual platform, uh, those things may be correct or incorrect, but uh, from spiritual platform they are not to be considered very serious. Therefore, asatyāna because. His lamentation was <coughs> on the bodily concept of life. That bodily concept of life in the very beginning of Krishna's in instruction, it is condemned. Also chan on his You are lamenting on the bodily concept of life. Because anyone who is in the bodily concept of life, he is no better than animal. Oh.